Welcome to another VPOC Pro tutorial everyone. So this is the first in a series of ETPA leveling videos and today we're going to go through two precise planning options for getting a five degree post-op TPA every time with a modified cranial closing wedge ostectomy technique and we're going to show you how to set your target TPA in this case five degrees and then use the reposition tool and the wedge tool to take a reproducible intuitive plan into the OR. So thanks to Frederick and Crosspaper in 2016, and thank you to Dr. Cross for allowing us to make direct reference to it here. We know we can take a, a modified wedge a technique to level those stifles with ETPA. And essentially, we're going to be taking an asymmetric wedge uh, to level an ETPA, but also minimize the loss in tibial length associated with wedge techniques. In the duplicated images here, on the left, we've got a proximal target mechanical axis based on the target post-op. TPA of five degrees and we're looking to align it with the blue existing mechanical axis here. And the existing mechanical axis is defined via our known landmarks proximally at the intercontylar eminences distally through the center of the talus. So if we look on the right as to how we're going to achieve this we take out an asymmetric wedge and define the proximal fragment that we're going to reduce and we get an initial cranial long axis shift followed by a caudal long axis shift and we optimize the cortical alignment like so. So how do we plan this? Well schematically we're going to be aligning a proximal bone axis here with our distal blue axis here aligning our target with our existing axis here. So if we visualize the steps this will help us understand the planning. So let's define the transverse osteotomy level of the distal end of the tubular osteo and simply realign that proximal fragment with the target mechanical axis that we want to pass through the center of the talus. It defines it. So we can move this around until we get a cranial and cortical edge of the proximal fragment that aligns with the cut, the osteotomy as defined by the red arrow. And if we look a little more closely, we can see that there's an overlap of bone. And the shape of this is the surplus bone stock. It's in the way. So let's delineate what we want to get rid of with the wedge tool. So tools, top right, tools, and then the wedge. And we can place that wedge over the area of bone that we're looking to remove, like so. So in here, in this case, it's a wedge of 49.9 degrees. So if we trace back to the original tibial outline, we can see now we can reposition this wedge exactly where it needs to be And we can measure that wedge's position from all our known palpable landmarks when we're in surgery with our patient. We can go to measurement tool here and measure our D1 to the cranial tip of the wedge. We can maybe measure a D2 to the cranial base of the wedge and a D3 measuring from a maybe a 21 gauge or 23 gauge needle in the caudal aspect of the joint to the level of the caudal completion of that transverse osteotomy and we can also measure and take the wedge magnitude and denote that on our annotations tool which is up here on the right under tools text and we can now fill in all of those measurements here so a typical plan for a cranial closing wedge osteotomy will look like this and the last thing we'll need to do is then just template an implant that will hold this all together so we go to our menu top right and pick uh, our implants from here and then pick uh, one of the different manufacturers and uh, uh, the TPLA plate for example here and then go up and down through the sizes to then work out what is the most appropriate uh, implant re for robust fixation for, for our patient. So let's go right from the top. Let's go right from the start with using the reposition tool. We'll be using the tracking tool to accommodate the long axis shift and we'll be using the wedge tool. 
So if we go to Wartibia now, and the first thing I would recommend you do is take the annotations tool and de just define with an arrow what the distal component of your wedge is going to be. And you can explore, go back and forth, um, but generally speaking, I would recommend you start at the distal extremity of that tibial, tibial uh, crest right there. The next thing to do is to define the target. Okay, so we need a line tool and two of them. So we're going to go for our long axis extending from the distal landmark of the center of the talus proximally. And we can put this anywhere we want to, and I'll show you why in a minute. But we will take the measurement value off and bring in a second line. Tools, measure, second line. And if our stifle is facing to the left, the second line comes in at that five degree off the perpendicular there. So that's our that's our pair of target lines that we want to, to be able to de define on our post-operative radiograph. That's our target. So now we're going to just leave that there for now because we can track the long axis shift by tapping on the angle and moving it cranially and cordially. But the first thing we do after defining the target is to use the reposition tool. So tools, reposition tool. And if you start at one end, for example, cranially, of the osteotomy and you leave it at the caudal exit point there and we click done we can now rotate but also by placing our finger or, or the mouse cursor in the center of that blue circle we can also pan it so let's pan it and try and get some cortical alignment there cranial to caudal and that's pretty good but we've not achieved our target five degrees if we tap on the axis then tap on the angle we can now move that five degree TPA target. No, we still haven't hit five degrees. So let's retask our fragment here and reposition it and see if we can get the appropriate five degree TPA. So tap on the axis, tap on the angle and then track the shift. So not bad, I think we're close to it, but let's retask our repositioned fragment and just make the last final adjustment here. And I think we're there. So. The next thing we need to do is to define the wedge, the piece of bone that's in the way, that's superimposed there, distal to that transverse osteotomy line, so menu, and then we'll go to wedge tool. So the wedge is going to simply lie over our surplus bone stock here. And I would recommend that you place the green hypotenuse component of this wedge at the proximal end, because that's where we define from when we actually have the wedge tool. So let's just zoom in to get some accuracy here. There we go. I would say we've got a wedge there of yeah, 50. So now reset the repositioned fragment. We're just going to put that back to normal. Now we have our wedge that we can then reposition. And remember our hypotenuse of this wedge is going to be equal to the transverse osteotomy component. And we just simply place it on our baseline there to exit where we need it to be. So that's the wedge. It's a wedge base height for this particular position of the distal osteotomy of the wedge. The wedge base height here is 18.3. The wedge angle is 49. And if we start cutting, we can define from that green line, which we placed proximally and we can now click done. We have a cranial shift and then we reposition for optimal cortical alignment with a caudal lining up there for cortical apposition. And we can see let's tap the axis and then tap the angle. And we can see, right, have we achieved our target? I would say, yes, we have. So the last thing we need to do is the template. So menu top right, implants, choose a, a plate manufacturer of your choice and we can now start to explore what is going to be the most appropriate implant for this particular tibial morphology maybe if we wanted to go for a three five board we could explore with another manufacturer let's perhaps try a, a, a synthes where we have less of a, a caudal overhang for this particular style of plate so we can choose the appropriate orientation of the plate and size up and yeah, I think for this particular tibial morphology, a synthes might play it, a synthes plate might fit as well. So um, there we go. That's a 
that's the superimposition method and we'll go on to now um, the starter wedge method which is a slight variation on this so what we uh, do here is we uh, define the proximal and distal axes and we uh, look at the core magnitude and we apply that to a wedge reduce and we track the long axis shift and we find what the uh, um, if we've achieved our target five degrees and then make a slight adjustment of the wedge to meet that target five degree TPA post off case okay, so we've set the target with two lines as before we bring in the distal line okay so tools measure center of the talus proximal but this is to give us um, a, a starter wedge which we can then adjust to get the precise wedge that's required we can see now if we tap on the 128 degrees there it defaults to the obtuse uh, angle there but the actual uh, core of magnitude in this instance is is 51 and a half so let's take a wedge tool a starter wedge as i say so wedge tool and we're going to uh, take uh, a distal component of the wedge there and that's going to be the hypotenuse okay of our wedge so if we look at this arrow and let's retask it and we're going to define our distal osteotomy here that we can reproduce and then zooming in let's take a look at our wedge now we said the starter wedge size was going to be 51 degrees 51 and a half degrees now remember that green hypotenuse we can't change that because that's what we need for optimal cortical alignment so that length is fixed as a component of the wedge so what we need to do is make sure it's based on our osteotomy line and we need to create a wedge size of 51 so let's just keep moving up until we get a 51 degree wedge okay and this is our starter wedge okay so we're going to make some fine adjustments afterwards but we know that our green hypotenuse here is fixed it's equal to the transverse osteotomy component so we know we're going to get an optimal alignment as long as our proximal osteotomy of that wedge is that length so let's start cutting define and reduce and see where we are let's track the shift so we don't need our distal axis anymore so we can remove him with the red dustbin now let's tap the axis tap the angle and then swing in to center it distally on the center of the talus proximally and track that shift so if we need to make any fine adjustments for the wedge if we are sighting it for the base at this point just tap the uh, uh, the wedge angle there and we can make an adjustment here by just rotating that anti-clockwise and clockwise until we have the precise tangent target there so I would say with a wedge that has a uh, osteotomy at this particular level distally the transverse osteotomy we're going to need a wedge of 51 so let's reset the wedge we need to just get a precise 51 degree wedge we can zoom in for extra clarity and precision to get our 51 like so superimpose it exactly as we want and making sure that exit point cranially with the hypotenuse is exactly matched we have a wedge base height of 17.8 and start cutting delineate your proximal bone stock reduce and adjust so we know that in the starter wedge method this is a way that where we can um, apply the core magnitude the initial core magnitude um, from a subjective distal axis we can apply that to the starter wedge and then adjust the wedge as we track the long axis shift thereafter we can measure our d1 d2 and d3 as previously described and we have a second precise way of measuring exactly five degrees tpa and planning to it so by the end of this video you should now be able to plan precisely to five degrees tpa for a modified cranial closing wedge ostectomy you can take your plan either using the superimposition method in vcop or the starter wedge method and finally thank you very much for dr scott featherston for supplying the radiographs for this video uh, well con well contrasted and centered rads uh, really appreciate that so thank you to him